My name's Darren Collins. I'm the uh, Global Director for Financial Services here at Lexmark. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, we help our banking customers uh, achieve three things. So number one, we help them improve their profitability through increasing their customer experience. Uh, number two, we help them uh, reduce their operating costs through process automation. And number three, we help them stay out of trouble by ensuring compliance. In my opinion and what, what we see, um, onboarding is, is a vital step in, in any bank. Um, so, you know, the first thing I'd say is whether you're opening an account, applying for a mortgage, or maybe um, applying for a credit card, it's that first interaction that, that the customer has with the bank. So it's very much the point at which that first impression is, is made. Um, and the age old saying, you, you never really get a, a second chance to make a first impression. I think, I think is really key. Um, so if that onboarding process isn't easy, you know, fast and, and efficient, you, you know, customers will vote with their feet and, and go elsewhere. So it's, it's probably more critical to get that onboarding process good, good and right. So that's my first comment. Second comment is the reality of, of today is I don't think many banks are getting it right. Um, I mean, globally speaking, more than 70% don't have a digital uh, onboarding process. So what does that mean? It means you know, a customer has to input manually you know, some data or they have to provide you know, hard copy documents or worse still, they have to you know, visit a branch. So you know, customers are getting frequently frustrated in, in the process. As a result of that, we see you know, around about 35% of customers dropping out of the process because they get frustrated and, and go somewhere else. So that's a, a cost to the bank and it's also uh, you know, failure to, to convert that contact to, to revenue. First off, let me talk about uh, ABN AMRO in, uh, in the Netherlands. So a recent, recent customer of ours in terms of onboarding. Uh, the great statistic I'd share there is we've cut their uh, processing time within their KYC process by over 70%. So what does that mean? Well, two things. For the bank, significant cost reduction. In, in that operation, but not just cost, because we're automating it, we're also improving the accuracy of the data and therefore the accuracy of the process. So again, as we get into you know, risk mitigation and ensuring good quality of, of service, that's really key. So clear, clear advantages there for, uh, for the bank, but for the customer. You know, for an ABN customer, that 70% reduction in processing time means they're getting to the product that they need at a faster rate. It also means that they've given much better insight into the process. So they're being constantly updated as, as they go through. So ABN's a, a great success story. Another one I'd share with you, uh, ING in, uh, in Germany. So a long-standing customer of ours, um, but they've recently expanded into, into onboarding um, and really self-service, so allowing customers to be able to capture pictures of their IDs and, and use that to initiate the process of, of opening an account. They've also just launched uh, a bill pay service. So as I receive a, you know, a utility bill, or a telephone bill, gas bill, electric bill, I can simply take my, my phone, take a picture of that bill and have it paid automatically. So I think ING is, is a great example where we've helped them you know, move beyond just onboarding and providing really value-add services that help you know, enrich the customer's life and, and really help you know, retain, retain that customer.
In terms of a number, that's a tough one to quantify. But in, but in terms of you know the desire to to move in this direction, it's a really exciting time. It's, it's, there's an irony here, actually, when you look at financial services. That was really you know the first set of, of private sector companies to embrace IT. Uh, but that early adoption has almost led them to be more of a, a laggard now, you know, because those aging systems cannot evolve quick enough to really embrace that real time, you know, mobile first, uh, consumer led um, period that we're in. And we, we call that age of the customer. So I think, you know, across the board, right now banks are, are working hard to digitally transform because they know they are not meeting customer expectations add into that the threat of new entrants in the market you know there's a lot of emerging competition uh, non-banks if you like that are coming in and and starting from scratch you know starting with uh, a, a brand new operation so they're not constrained by uh, legacy systems and, and are able to architect their products and services to meet customer needs far more efficiently. So back to your, your question of, of what percentage by 2020, I think I'd look at it the other way around. The ones that aren't will see a significant you know, drop out of, of customers and a much higher, you know, level of attrition. I think it's a really exciting period of, of transformation that we're in right now. You know, one could argue in, in the first wave of digital transformation, the relationship between customer and bank has actually been negatively impacted you know, why do I say that? Well, gone are the days of, you know, the branch manager having the relationship with the customer and being able to, you know, predict their, their needs because of that, that visibility and, and insight. So I think, you know, the next wave we're in is, is to bridge that gap and in this digital age, bring the relationship between customer and bank cl closer together. Um, I read a, a, a great report last week from, from KPMG um, and they basically predicted that by 2030 banking services would be invisible to the customer. I found it really interesting, it really resonated with me. You know, I talk about banking, you know, the utopia of banking should be like the best waiter experience you've ever had. So a waiter that is, is always there to meet your needs, can predict your requirements, topping up your glass, maybe bringing the next course, and, and giving guidance and, and advice, but all of that balance with never being um, intrusive into one's life or, or, or obstructive. So I think the future state is really, I bring it back to those three key things I mentioned up front, you know, ensuring profitability, cutting costs, and improving compliance. I think striking the right balance of those will allow banks to really achieve, you know, that gold standard level of service. So when we think about Uber or Amazon or Apple, you know, banks are, are running to catch up to provide that, that gold level of service. But I think in achieving those three, those three things, banking will become uh, invisible to, to, to the customer, but more importantly, provide you know, great trust and stability of operation and, and really ensuring that they truly provide the right customer experience in, in this age of the customer.